Uh, this is this is uh, ours. Yeah, they they are not owned, uh, and particularly uh, they, they are for you and for me. So you may take any seat and uh, take comfort in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I know most of us don't like to come closer eh, to the altar. I don't know why we fear the altar and we fear to be close enough in the presence of the Lord. It's important for us to be courageous, to be closer to the presence of the Lord. And I don't mean that if you are too far that you don't experience, but uh, it's good just to be close. It's good just to be close. Amen. 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 Now you can appreciate my, your neighbor on my behalf and tell them thank you for obeying in the name of Jesus. Come on, appreciate them in Jesus' name. Amen. Appreciate the praise and worship for the good worker. Glory to Jesus. We may take our seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now, um, for those of you that have been with us, I've uh, been uh, covering the book of Nehemiah. And particularly, we've uh, had uh, the subject that we've been covering on moved to move, moved to move. And uh, we've looked at uh, what really moved uh, Nehemiah, and I told you that Nehemiah asked and inquired of how the remnants of Judah and Jerusalem were doing, and he was touched particularly by the way they are suffering, the way the wall was in ruin, and uh, everything was not working well for them, and he was touched, and when he was touched, he moaned, he moved his heart, when he moved his heart, he equally embarked on a mission to move God. Because I told you it is important when you are moved, you move God equally. Because when God moves, everything else moves. And last week particularly, I covered on something that I want to uh, close today and finish today. As I look at other aspects, uh, because I may look at other aspects uh, of uh, this book of Nehemiah because it's, it, it has quite a lot that uh, it is uh, teaching us and it's important for us. I told you that um, I have a purpose to like, uh, delve and dig deeper into the scriptures instead of just rushing through so many scriptures and uh, we forget about them as soon as uh, we've read them and we covered them. But I have a purpose to do this. And uh, uh, I may cover other aspects of uh, Nehemiah but today let me wind up on the prayer that moves God. Last week I started on that. Prayer that moves God. And uh, because we found that uh, when uh, Nehemiah heard what was happening in Jerusalem and Judah. And uh, he was moved. He was moved. And uh, after mourning and crying and uh, sitting there. He started to pray. And while we were looking at the content of this prayer. Because this prayer indeed was important because it forms um, an important component uh, of this book. Because everything else and the success of the rest of the mission is pegged on this prayer. And therefore it is very important. It is covered there, uh, we read with you uh, from now when uh, uh, Nehemiah had heard and had moaned and had wept and he started praying. And uh, he started praying to God so that God may do something on behalf of these people. And uh, this prayer is important. This prayer is important. Uh, I realize I covered, uh, I told you that uh, as he prayed, he reminded God of his covenant. He reminded uh, God of his covenant. And this particular covenant was the covenant of love uh, that God had made with them uh, in Deuteronomy chapter number 7. Uh, Verse 9, particularly there, when he was telling them about this covenant of love. How he deals with them that love him. And it's important for us to recognize that uh, God values love. Because for those that disobey and hate him, they are punished up to the third and fourth generation. 
But if you see the punishment up to the third and fourth generation cannot be equated to the blessings of love because the Bible is saying it, is, it goes beyond thousands of generations. So if you compare the wrath and uh, the punishment of God, it is minimal as compared uh, to the blessings of uh, love because uh, sometimes uh, we are so much afraid of what God can do when he is angry and so less concerned about what God he can do when he is happy. We should be concerned uh, or concerning ourselves with the things that makes God happy because they outweigh those that uh, make, them, uh, make him angry. Because uh, for punishment it is up to the fourth generation. But uh, for reward for those who love him it is up to thousands and thousands without limitation of generations and these are not just persons generations are and therefore uh, he reminded him of that covenant that he had kept when God is reminded of his covenant uh, it is binding unto him it is binding unto him he will be moved by it because uh, he had kept that covenant and I told you it's an agreement uh, between two or more parties uh, where they are bound by the agreement uh, therein and therefore it, it, it's, it's important for us to remind God uh, the covenant uh, whenever we go into prayer then he acknowledged uh, God Almighty the power of God and all that he acknowledged uh, the power of God and we saw that equally Jesus taught that uh, when he said when you go into prayer pray uh, uh, our father who art in heaven hallowed uh, be thy name to glorify God is so much important even in prayer now again he sought for God's attention uh, and I said it's important for us because uh, some of us we embark on prayer like something that is just done in a particular way, in a particular you know style uh, for a particular time and, and just to pass time because prayer time has come. And it's like we are not expecting anyone to listen to us or to answer us. But such should not be the case for prayers because uh, when we pray, this is a a serious exercise uh, and a Christian exercise that we must embark on expecting to draw the attention of God because when uh, he pays attention to us then he answers our prayers and indeed uh, I demonstrated that uh, that God is able to pay attention uh, because it is time for us to be heard. He pays attention. And for particularly for these people, I told you that there is a time they had been told in Jeremiah chapter number 29 uh, that uh, for a period of time they are going to experience, uh, you know, God's absence and uh, the, a kind of a dry spell uh, in the spiritual realm that uh, they are going not to be interacting with God uh, as regularly as they would wish. Sometimes God would just come to their rescue and just disappear and leaves them on their own so that whenever they call unto him there was no guarantee that he was hearing them but now they were promised that there is going to come a time when that moment or that period of punishment uh, and the dry spell is over then they were going to be inviting God and he is going to be found they are going to be calling unto God and he's going to hear them and answer them particularly we read in the book of Jeremiah chapter number 29 verse 12 there when they said then then when you say then it is, it is after something it is after something it cannot be uh, by default it is, it, it's after something uh, after that period then they will be calling unto him he, he will be found when they seek him and all that because and I told you for us we have no barriers whatsoever every time is an open season for prayer and whenever we call unto God he is ready to hear us and I said again uh, uh, that uh, he confessed the sins uh, of uh, his own sins uh, uh, to start with uh, those of Israel and those of his father's house and um there is where I closed when I told you that uh, sometimes uh, it's easy to forgive than to bear the burden of those that are sinners. Uh. Sometimes we are so selfish and we want to carry our burdens. Uh. Even when we sin before the Lord, uh, we are willing to uh, confess and say, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me for this, forgive me for that. But uh, if it's someone else 
that has done something and even they have not sought for your help in terms of confession and you are required to confess on their behalf then it becomes a little bit tricky that you are confessing on someone that has not required of you or has not requested you or, or you are not uh, praying together so that you are helping them to confess no in fact sometimes they are not even aware that you are confessing on their behalf because when he is confessing the sins of Israel Israel is not aware that he is confessing on their behalf when he is confessing on behalf of his father's house his father's house is equally not aware that he is doing so and as such he is likely to encounter even opposition even in terms of that if if uh, just imagining just imagining this is not what happened uh, but just imagining that he later went and informed them that uh, my brothers and sisters uh, I have confessed all your sins and you have been forgiven and uh, the response would not have been that good because they would be asking and who told you to confess on our behalf because we never sent you sometimes they could not even be interested with that confession because not everybody was remorseful of whatever it is that they had done because confession maybe i will get another moment to talk about confession uh, um, uh, in details uh, requires a remorseful heart you know that heart that is uh, contrite before God that heart uh, that uh, recognizes that it has done wrong and wants to return to God because without that heart then confession becomes uh, very very difficult and I've told you that uh, many times uh, there are people who may tell you sorry but the manner in which they do it uh, seems uh, uh, completely unacceptable because uh, they don't seem to be you know remorseful they don't seem uh, to be like uh, uh, regretting what they did they seem just to be doing it just to please you so that those words can just come out of their mouths uh, but a uh, uh, true confession is whereby someone feels it from the heart there is that pain that is compelling one to move in the direction uh, of confession and and and, and, and I say that it's uh, upon us to bear the burden of those that are not even aware that the burden exists. Our families, our societies, uh, where we live, our nation, our nation. If we see that the nation is so sinful, it is not for us to continue condemning and complaining about the nation. It is for us to go down on our knees and confess on behalf of the nation uh, and uh, probably God will forgive us and heal our land as he says in the book of chronicles now let me move on uh, uh, to the last three that i left out there in this prayer because uh, nehemiah even as he is praying he is also doing something else uh, give me verse chapter number one of the book of nehemiah verse eight and nine there where because the, the, there is a point there where he activated the word of God he activated uh, the word of God this is what the Bible says remember I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses saying if we uh, uh, transgress I will scatter or if ye uh, transgress I will cast you abroad among uh, the nations uh, but if you return and me and keep my commandments and do them though they were of uh, you are uh, there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven yet i uh, will i gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that i have chosen to set my name there now it's important for us to recognize that uh, this is still in his prayer he is activating the word of the lord which the lord said he is activating the word of the lord now one important component and we've talked about this before it is praying in accordance to the word of god because uh, the word of god is like potential kind of an energy it is something kept there awaiting activation without which it remains dormant and uh, uh, without uh, effect in our lives uh, and therefore sometimes it's important for us to recognize that the word of God needs to be activated uh, through prayer whenever we go uh, before God in prayer the prayer is more powerful when we pray according to the word of God when we activate uh, the word of God he is activating here 
word of God, he is telling him what he said that if they sin against him, they may be scattered, they may be, you know, scattered all over. But uh, if they return unto him, uh, he is going to return them, he is going to gather them just the way he scattered them uh, all over, he is going to gather them uh, from all over and bring them uh, to the place of his choosing for the glory and honor of his name. Uh, this is the word that uh, this man. Uh, is activating because he realized that, that after repenting the sins of these people that is the direction of returning unto God that is the spirit of returning unto God and many times uh, what we do not know is that uh, when we return unto God uh, we are activating the word of God even without uh, knowing sometimes uh, that's why I say that uh, it is more powerful when we pray according to the word of God than just when we pray but sometimes uh, even when you pray and do things that are in accordance to the word of God even when you don't quote the word and quote the scriptures by default what you are doing you are obeying the word of God you are activating the word of God it doesn't matter who is doing what but whatever effect is expected must happen it's like this electricity here and there are switches here it doesn't matter so long as there is power along those lines if anyone goes and touches the switch then it's going to go on whether they knew it or not sometimes I find people touching them with their shoulders maybe just leaning on the wall or well passing and holding on the switch without knowing but anyway the power is going to respond because it is you know wired that way so that when a switch is activated then power will be on that's also the way the word of God act, uh, uh, operates uh, that sometimes you may not be knowing that you are activating a specific scripture that is written and I've come to realize uh, that most of us uh, we do not have so much in store that can last us for so long particularly when we go into prayer I always confess that I'm not a very good person in quoting uh, this and this and this I'm not uh, so good uh, there are people who would quote uh, 40, 50 scriptures when they are standing somewhere I am not one of them but maybe you are one of them Patrick who can quote 50 scriptures uh, so that when you are praying for one hour you can continue quoting scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture and telling the Lord uh, what it is that you want uh, but uh, sometimes uh, it is just uh, uh, the, the, the aspect of the word of God that you are putting into effect uh, sometimes uh, 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 whatever you do if for example you confess without even quoting any scripture if you have that uh, repentant heart in you and you are confessing before the Lord you are activating a particular word without even knowing without even you quoting it yourself uh, and that's the relevance uh, of um, activating the word of God because he realized even as I pray I need to activate the word because the word requires to be activated now tell your neighbor you need to activate the word of God through prayer sometimes we say so many things that are not in accordance to the word of God we say and talk about our desires that are not in line with the word of God we present our issues that are not in line with the word of God and yet there is something that we are expected to do so that those issues will be resolved because mostly we are focused with the effect of what we are going through and we want it resolved as soon as possible as soon as possible now uh, I told you at some point uh, if for example you put your hand on a pan that is hot for example uh, and uh, you complain about the heat and about the burning and yet your hand remains there 
Now it's going to continue burning and uh, you know the effect of it is going to continue to be felt until you do something, until you do something, until you remove your hand there, until maybe uh, be, uh, you go and nurse those wounds and all, all that. Because a, a, as long as your hand remains there, no matter how much you complain, the pan is not going to become maybe cold, it is not going to change the temperature, you are going to continue burning as long as uh, your hand remains there. And sometimes things and issues that we go through require certain action. So that if you do that in accordance to the word of God, th that issue is taken away. So without that understanding, we focus on the issues. And sometimes, uh, even when we go before God uh, to pray in prayer, and even when we are telling people to pray for us, we are telling uh, them to pray for us uh, for those specific issues. But without understanding why we landed there in the first place, and what we need to do. Like now, in this case, these people, they had, uh, you know, uh, sinned against the Lord. Or, you know, created a huge distance between them and the Lord. They had forgotten uh, the Lord. And now, here, the scripture is saying, if you return, if you return. So that as long as they remained here and continued uh, complaining and crying and doing all manner of things and never returned, uh, nothing would happen. And therefore, activating the word of God requires people that understand uh, that word of God. Because uh, praying is not just praying without praying in accordance to the word of God. Because sometimes the Bible says uh, that we, we do not have because we do not ask. And when we ask, we ask amiss or we do not ask uh, things that are in accordance uh, to the will of God. That is the, the book of James uh, that we were speaking. And you remember uh, pray, uh, just recently we were covering that book uh, in our revival meetings. Uh, and, and, and it's important to realize what James was saying there. That uh, we don't have because we do not ask. And if we ask, we ask not in accordance to the will of God. And no wonder when Jesus is appearing before the Lord and uh, he is praying. had uh, thereafter someone was, that was praying and uh, something happened uh, similar to that that happened to Jesus. Uh, because when he was praying, he was sweating blood. You must realize he was in pain for him to be sweating blood. But the, he realized and uh, he was uh, saying in some way that this cup that is before me is too bitter for me. It's going to be so heavy on me. So please uh, just remove it from me. But he says uh, towards the end that not my will but may your will be done. Because that is his desire. For the cup to be removed. But when he says, uh, as, uh, may your will be done. Because now, the will of God now, it is the scripture. Because many times when we talk about the will of God, we think it is something that is out there. Out there, that is uh, hanging somewhere. It is unknown to no one. And sometimes it comes uh, to uh, life uh, in uh, uh, you know particular cases. And that's not the case. Uh, the God is the scriptures. It is the word of God. It's uh, written. Now, sometimes uh, 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 for those that are Bible scholars, uh, and I know there are a, a, a number here, that um, we are told that the revelation was closed. So that many times when we say that I have a revelation, revelation is already closed. Because the revelation is covered in the scriptures from Genesis to the book of Revelation. That is the revelation. What we have is illumination, light into those scriptures or that word of God. So that we do not expect any other word to be added into the word that we already know. And this is the disaster with Christians, particularly Pentecostals. Sometimes we leave the scriptures away and we put it away and we imagine there is some other will of God hanging somewhere that is going to drop on us, making us to understand the direction that we should follow, not understanding that the will of God is in scriptures. Now, tell your neighbor, the will of God is in the word of God. Because we have ignored the scriptures, 
we have put it aside and i heard someone even say that i read and i could not understand i tried to search the scriptures and i could not understand then i put the bible away and started praying for the will of god which will of god because you have already departed from the will of god the moment you put the scriptures away but the moment you continue you know speaking the scriptures speaking the word of god in fact i found uh, something interesting uh, and this is not in my behavior but i realize that it is also important uh, sometimes even something that is not in your behavior if you find it uh, good it's okay it's okay it's okay because uh, we do not live in an island i saw some uh, people and i know some people even do so here that whenever they are in prayer they pray while holding their bibles and uh, sometimes uh, they are always reading the bible when they are praying so that uh, they will pray read the bible the scriptures uh, then go to another one and continue reading uh, they read uh, they go to another one they read uh, because they understand the power of the scriptures uh. now I, I don't tell you and I, i'm not telling you to do so um, you may do so if you uh, so desire but it's important that your prayer is full of scriptures because if your prayer is not full of scriptures then it is out of the word of god and mostly it will be driven by your personal desires that sometimes are not in line with the word of god they are not in the uh, in line with the word of god and sometimes if you ask for something where it cannot be found no matter how much you cry it will not be found there it will not be found there i remember one, once we to a bank somewhere uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, we were three of us in the vehicle and uh, we reached somewhere uh, along vicar road and uh, uh, the people that were ahead of us there told us that we buy some fuel the, they were using a generator so when they called us and they realized that uh, we were not far far away they told us uh, if you are coming uh, buy some fuel for the generator and come with it and uh, the problem is that we didn't have a jerry can and i decided to send one of uh, uh, my passengers uh, a jerry can and uh, there were there were shops there were three like uh, three shops and uh, this this guy the first place he went to look for a jerry can it was in a butchery so that he entered a butchery and i'm asking what how do you enter a butchery and start asking for a jerry can and and and, and, and it was weird and he comes back and tells me they don't sell jerry cans what do they sell i'm asking him and he say that they sell meat only and it is expected that in a butchery they will be selling meat so no matter how much you cry outside that butchery or inside that butchery they are not going to give you a jerry can and that's the the, the 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 funny thing with christians because whenever we push away the scriptures it's like a man going to look for a jerry can in a butchery tell your neighbor do not look for a jerry can in a butchery because it will not be found there you may cry you may moan you may shout you may ask for it with a loud voice but it is not going to to change anything it's not going to be found there so praying in accordance to the word of god you are activating what god said and when you activate what god said then things begin to happen things begin to happen you cannot be complaining about darkness and you have electricity in your house and you just need to touch that switch so that that power can be activated this is what the bible says in the book of hebrews chapter number 4 verse 12 hebrews chapter number 4 and verse 12 um, uh, um uh, the bible says uh, about the effect uh, and the power of the scriptures hebrews chapter number 4 verse 12 uh, this is what the bible says for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword the word of god is quick and i know
many of us want quick results. And no wonder most of us have been discouraged in going along the lines of prayer because sometimes we prayed and we saw like nothing is happening. We wanted quick answers, quick fix, something that was going just to happen. You ask and it happens immediately. And when they were delayed, when there was no response for a while, you got tired. You got tired. Because you wanted it fixed very fast. And I've come to realize we live in a world that people want quick things. They want quick things. You know, quick things. Things that are happening. Things that are happening. Very quick. And uh, some of you may have seen this in the social media that are some some now now even the dreams are changing for children when they are asked what do you want to become when you grow up they say i want to become a rich man so how do you want to become a rich man is, is that your dream you know when we were growing up we never talked about money <laughs> because we know we knew that money is as a result of what you will do what you will be pursuing money will follow you after you do what you ought to do but in essence what these children are saying they have learned that in this world you need money and you need it soonest you need it very fast so they don't want to go you know going to school doing work doing this and doing this and grow, growing rich slowly and slowly they don't want that they want as soon as they are grown up money comes and they are rich so that they are saying, my dream, when I grow up, I want to become a rich man. And that is the tragedy of our Christians of this day. Because we have changed our priorities. Because we are told that the answers are in the scriptures. That the answers are in the word of God. But we have neglected the word of God. We are no longer studying the word of God. We are no longer reading the word of God. Because we have been deceived to imagine that there are other quicker ways of achieving quick results. And we are running to those quicker ways. And sometimes we have been disappointed even there. Even there we have been disappointed. And I told you that pressure is all over. We have been pressurized by the world. The world has a lot of pressure. Lot of pressure. That you go here, you see someone that is, you know, uh, you schooled with Leon. They are doing well. They have a fleet of cars. They have houses. They have businesses. They are established. And you ask yourself, where did I go wrong? And sometimes... Uh, some of them are kids some of them are kids men that are as old as myself we meet kids very little kids uh, small ones are uh, in the uh, uh, you know 20s maybe they are 20 or 21 they are they are millionaires and we are told meet the youngest millionaires and they are doing so well and that moment, the moment you are hearing about them and their story, there is something that is telling you that you need to be before them. Because you are so much older than them. You should have been before them. But yet you are trailing. You know, that which we call distant. Eh? Distant. You know, second, not even second, I would call it. Uh, you remember when my good friend, I liked him politically because he was uh, my good friend, uh, uh, the late Kalem Bendile. He won uh, the that seat that he was vying for, I think for somewhere in Machakos. I don't know his constituency. It was called what? Yeah? Kibwezi. And he was saying, because he, he won with a landslide, he was saying that I was number one, number two, number three, num number four. Yeah? The one that was following me was number <laughs> number five. <laughs> because he won with a landslide. So many votes so that he was saying there is a gap, a huge gap between him and the, the, the runners up. And sometimes that pressure is so real in our midst. 
and that pressure is making us to abandon the word of God but may, let me remind you the word of God is quick it is not slow the word of God is quick because we have neglected it no wonder it is slow no wonder it is slow now just imagining something that you abandon and you are the one that is going to carry on when you are back imagining you abandon some work and it is you that is going to complete that work so that every time you abandon it it is stalls it is stalls waiting for you to come back and continue tell your neighbor come back and continue <laughs> uh -huh. and sometimes that's why we are trailing because we imagine other processes are faster but i want to tell you the word of god is quick it is quick it has speed it has the ability to move faster than anything that we can imagine and if you want results and quick results stick to the word of god even when you go into prayer because when you stick into the word of God, it is not just about talking about the word of God. No. It is about when you talk about it, it tells you something that needs to be done. Because I told you that uh, in the covenant, and the word of God is a covenant, there is what you do and there is what he does. So that it's not just about talking about it. Because mostly we have talked about it in the form of just speech. We talk about it, then we leave it. We need to talk about it and act upon it so that we will be activating that speed. We will be activating that speed. And I have come to learn that many things require your participation for them to happen. So that when you are not participating, that's why they are not happening. But when you begin to participate in them, in the process of God doing things for you, it will be fast because the word of God is not slow. Now remind your neighbor, the word of God is not slow. Now tell them once again, the word of God is not weak. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very, very powerful. Very powerful. Now, indeed, for example, if you ask somebody, if you ask somebody that are people that want and desire to make it in life, they want to become rich, eh? and they want to achieve one, two, three things very fast, eh? very fast. If you ask them, um, what did you do? And they tell you, I prayed, and I believed in the word of God. Yes, you will tell them, yes, 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 but what else did you do? <laughs> because that else, we are expecting that else delivered the results. It is not prayer and the word. We believe that something else is what delivered the results. That something else is what delivered the results. And sometimes that's why we are very, very devastated when we try even that something else and it's not working. Because we did not listen in the first place. Because someone said, I prayed and I believed in the word of God. But we abandoned that and went to that what else. And that what else did not deliver for us. And we are wondering, I did exactly as you told me. But what happened? What happened? Sometimes the results are different. Because even to different people, the results will be different. The results will be different. That's why even, even when it comes to taste, when it comes even to, 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 to health, uh, even those that are receiving their vaccinations, we are told that you, you cannot be vaccinated because you have this and this. You, you, you need something else. You need, because we are all different. But the scriptures remains powerful no matter where it is spoken or activated it remains powerful no matter who is the opposition it remains powerful no matter what you are up against no matter what you want to achieve the word of god remains powerful it's not weak 
that sometimes we want just to use it when we are in church and uh, you know those religious activities uh, we want to say we want to read the word of god we want to hear what god is saying in this scripture but as soon as we live there we do not imagine that the word of god is powerful we think that it's it's a weekly it cannot deliver for us tell your neighbor the word can deliver for you yeah and it is sharper than any two-edged sword it is also sharp it's not blunt no it is sharp but we are looking all over we are looking all over for other things to deliver for us something else that he did away from activating uh, the scripture is that he attached value to his prayer he attached uh, value to his prayer because in verse 10 there uh, of the book of uh, Nehemiah chapter number 1 he is saying about how these people are valuable unto God and this is what he's saying now these are thy servants and thy people whom thou redeemed by the great power and by thy strong hand now this is important attaching value means that you are touching the heart of God now let me give you an example I went somewhere when I was a young man I was sent by someone and uh, the, this someone was a uh, was a church elder um, and uh, they sent me to their house so uh, to go and fetch their ID there was something that they were doing with their ID it was on a Sunday I remember I was a young man and I was sent to their house to go and fetch their ID now when I knocked at the door I they they answered the children were there they were teenagers they were teenagers they were watching TV and the mother was also there but she was sleeping on the couch there she was sleeping on the couch so when I knocked the door the children uh, answered and I asked them uh, is your mother sleeping they said yes and uh, they asked me what did you want I said I was sent by your father to come and collect his ID and when the mother heard that she woke up because she was from central she woke up she said, Ateke! and I'm like what she, she couldn't recognize that that was me she knew me but she didn't recognize it was me with my voice but I realized that she was listening to the whole conversation until I touched something of value that's when she jumped because the way she woke up out of that couch because I told the children because now that the mother is asleep and they seem not so you know uh, you know concerned and uh, they don't want to arise her and I don't know what to do so I told them what I came for and uh, when the, she heard that I had come for ID she jumped up uh, at the key and I was like oh okay <laughs> so you are not sleeping you were listening all along <laughs> if you attach value let me tell you you are touching the heart of God because many times and you know what they say about people from central eh? they will faint until you drop a coin eh? <laughs> or talk about some money and ask there is some money here who I don't know whose money is this they will wake up even when they had fainted because you have touched something of value now attaching value to your prayer is important because people respond to value people respond to value if if nothing is of value is talked about people don't don't care they they don't bother but if something of value is talked about then they bother even god is touched by things of value he is telling him that these are thy servants and thy people that you redeemed with great power and strong hand you did a lot to make them who they are today there is a lot of work that you did you redeemed them by great power and uh, God responds to value because he says in Isaiah what he will do because of value in Isaiah chapter number 43 verse 1 to through to 4 there the, 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 the Bible talks about our value there how you are valued and the Bible says uh, but now thus says the Lord that created thee O Jacob he that formed thee O Israel fear not for I have redeemed thee I have called thee 
by thy name. Now, these are things of value. He says, I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. And thou art mine. Thou art mine. You know, those are things of value unto God. Then he says, uh, what uh, he will do because of that value. He says, uh, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And uh, through the rivers, uh, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Uh, neither shall the frame kindle upon thee. And then he is saying, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Now since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore I give men or, uh, for thee and uh, people for thy life. Now all this is coming out of value because God has valued Israel here he's calling him Jacob he has redeemed him he has called him by his name he is precious before him he has loved him and that way he will do so much when he goes through the fire he will not be burned when he goes through the waters, he will not be overwhelmed. He will give even, he says, what he did in the past. He gave Ethiopia and Egypt and Seba because of him. And now he says, he will give people and nations because of him. Why? Because of the value. Tell your neighbor, you are valuable before God. Mm. Now, this is a tricky one. Even when you go to a person, even when you go to a person and present your worth to them, you touch their hearts. An ordinary person, an ordinary person, if you presented your value to them, then you are touching their heart. And here, you are just sometimes, and this is, uh, sometimes it is not the first one it may not be the starting one that by going to God you just remind him who you are to him but sometimes it is the last one it is the last one so that when all others are not working and when you want mercy from God and you want something from God you remind him, you tell him how precious you are unto him what value he has attached unto you that Jesus died on the cross for you. Was that easy? Was that easy? Was it cheap? Now, if you attach that value, you are touching the heart of God. So when you go to prayer, sometimes it may seem like you are just, you know, amplifying your name and your worth and all that before God, but this is not the case. It is God himself that has said. And no wonder Nehemiah was reminding him how these are his servants. They are his people that he redeemed with great power and a mighty hand. He's reminding him. So sometimes you need to remind God, especially when you are in danger. Especially when you are suffering. Remind God how precious you are to him. What value. You present to him. You know how he has done things for you. And I know and I've come to realize. The things that you have invested so much. You don't want to let them go. You don't want to let them go. And someone we were having a conversation. This week I was in Akuru. We were having a conversation with someone. Uh, uh, is my father. I call him my father. Because he's the elder brother to to, to, to my father. Now, I, I visited him. I was in a meeting, but he lives around Nakuru, somewhere in Gata there. I visited him, and we had a conversation. And um, I was telling him some things that he needs to lose. And he was telling him, me, the far that he has come with those things, he cannot, never let them go. And I'm telling them, or I was telling him, now, compare the cost that you have incurred pursuing these things. Compare just the cost. 
vis-a-vis -vis the value of whatever it is that you are pursuing. But he was telling me, it's not about the value. I have spent so much than the worth of this. But I have come long enough to abandon it at this point. And I realized, I had already prepared this someone, and I realized that people attach value to what they have invested in. If you remind God the investment that he has placed in you, because it is him that gave his only son for you, you didn't ask, did you? How many asked for Jesus to come and die? Hallelujah. <laughs> no one. But he just gave out of love. He gave his son. How many things he has done on your behalf. How he has protected you. To what extent that he has gone to ensure your safety and your survival. If you remind God that, then he will say, Today you may be looking worthless. But I have invested so much in you so that I am the only one who understands that value. Because our decoy, myself and my father, that one, was in the value. Me, I don't that value that thing because I'm just comparing the cost that he has incurred so far vis-a-vis -vis the cost of what he has been pursuing. And yet he has not completed and I'm telling him, no, 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 you are going to lose a lot. But him... Because it is him that has invested that much. He said that even what I have uh, invested over and above the worth of this thing, then it is still mine. It is still mine. That's why when God speaks about you, he says, you are still mine even when no one values you. You are still mine even when the world has neglected you and abandoned you. You are still precious and honorable before me even when you are despised by everyone. Even when you look worthless and dirty and filthy and in rags. God is still saying you are still precious in me because I have invested so much in you. So whenever you go before God in prayer remind him you are value before him. Because if you present your value before him, he will see. Now, this is the person that I want to deal with. Someone, I'm I not a businessman, or my, forgive me for this, uh, but I was told that the same principle is used in the gospel. That uh, people don't buy your product before, because you tell them about it. I was told by a businessman. They told me that people don't buy your product because you are telling them about it. But they buy your product when you make them feel that they need it, that they cannot do without it. And sometimes, do you know, the way we present ourselves before God, we have presented ourselves as, you know, people that he can dispense with. You know, fill the rags. People that are worthless. People that don't deserve even mercy. People that God has not invested anything in. Because when we go in complaints and uh, despair and just complaints and saying how, you know, uh, you know, useless we are and all that. And God is wondering, do these people understand how much I have invested in them? So that if they are presenting themselves worthless, then who am I to attach any value to them? But if they come before me if they, because you remember I, I, if I had time I would go further in this the, 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 there was a woman that was not a Jew that appeared to Jesus if you go that scripture I don't know uh, it's in the gospels uh, that she, she appeared to Jesus and uh, she was seeking for a miracle from Jesus and Jesus is saying that I cannot give bread belonging to the children to the dogs ever heard of that scripture Yes, it's there. Look for it somewhere. I don't know. It's somewhere in the Bible. Eh? <laughs> now, because this woman was not a Jew and Jesus was not dealing with non-Jews. Now, there is something that she said. She said that even the dogs, even the dogs, they eat the crumbs. Eh? Those that drop out of the table of the master, they eat the crumbs. They eat those that drop. So, at least even if I am a dog, I am entitled to something. What she was saying is that 
You have said, you know, that uh, was very offensive. If you to a dog, then they are very offensive. If they compared you to a dog and they said that children be, uh, or bread belonging to children cannot be given or offered to dogs, then they, they are being offensive, to say the least. But she said, even that being the case, got it? Uh huh. But he answered, uh, can you go back to see what she was asking for? And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. She is possessed. But he answered her, not a word he remained silent and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she cried after us now it had come to that point where she needs to be you know dispensed with she needs to be you know taken away of that and meeting and all that because she's becoming a nuisance she has cried unto the lord my daughter is possessed please help me but her background is saying no you are a Canaanite. You are, a, a, you know, a, a heathen. You, you belong to the other world that I did not come to deal with. So you are not entitled to these things that I'm doing to the Jews. So, but he remained silent. But he answered and said, I am not sent. Where have you gone? But he answered and said, but I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Specifying where, why he had come and for who. And came she and worshipped him, saying, Help me, O oh Lord, help me. But he answered and said, He's still under man, he's still refusing. He answered and said, It is not a uh, meat, uh, there's uh, something missing on my screen there, <laughs> uh, to take the children's bread to cast it to, to dogs. Uh -huh. This is what he is saying. And she said, now the woman, truth, I agree, I agree. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. She's arguing her case, presenting her word. Now, uh -huh. Jesus, then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou will, O and uh, her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now tell your neighbor, you must present your case before the Lord. As a worthy person, I can't hear you, deserving a miracle. Tell them, some miracles are drawn from the Lord. Yeah, this miracle is one such a miracle. It was drawn from the Lord. He was not willing. He was saying, I was not sent to you. I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. In fact, in the first place, he was silent, ignoring her, ignoring her request. And she wondered. She disturbed the disciples. And the disciples came up with an idea. Send her away. She, she's disturbing the meeting. Send her away. But she came and worshipped him. And said, please, my daughter is possessed of demons. Please do something. And he said, I was not sent to this or for this. And she said, uh, or he said, uh, bread for children cannot be given unto dogs. She said, true, true, true. But even dogs, even dogs eat crumbs. She's finding her worth somewhere. Tell your neighbor, you have some worth somewhere. <laughs> yeah, people may have called you useless, good for nothing, you know, a failure and everything that they may call you. But I want to tell you, you have some worth before God. If God had this woman, may God hear you in the name of Jesus. Because God responds to what? To value. Remind your neighbor, God responds to value. Shall we rise up even as we pray in the name of Jesus? 
Aleluya. We adore you for you are such a great God. Thank you for your words, oh dear Lord. You have reminded us, oh dear Lord, all of us are valuable before you. And we thank you, dear Lord, for the work you have bestowed on us, for the price you paid for us, for the many things uh, that you have done for us that give us value. We thank you and worship you. We know that our Father, that you love us with a wonderful love. We are precious before you. You will give nations on our behalf. Because my Father and my God, of our value before you, we thank you. The world may not recognize this. The world may not acknowledge this. But we thank you because we know before you, oh dear Lord, we are valuable in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We know that my father and my God, even the least here in the, your family, even the least here in the your plot, in the your society, in the your estate, in the your workplace, even the least here in this nation is worthy before you, is so valuable before you. We thank you for that value. We thank you, our Father. We thank you, our Lord and Savior. 
we thank you for my father and my God there is still something that you treasure in us in the mighty name of Jesus we glorify you and we honor you and praise you our father and our Lord in the mighty name of Jesus thank you thank you I know that my father your people came in your house some feeling worthless some feeling neglected some feeling abandoned some feeling that they are good for nothing some oh dear lord despised by everyone but i want to pray in the name of jesus as they leave this house they are going to live understanding their worth and their value before you in the mighty name of jesus and that they can receive any kind of miracle from you in the mighty name of jesus i pray that lord you may meet with all needs in this house you may touch every soul in this house you may come through for everyone oh dear lord in the mighty name of jesus and you may answer every prayer that we have prayed before you this morning for you hear the prayer of your people in jesus mighty name we pray and also believe and everybody say amen, amen. hallelujah come on if you are shouting and clapping for the lord do it better that's my name. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you indeed for even listening to the world. Look at your neighbor and tell them you are worth some for God. Now be, be honest with them. Eh? Uh, this is for me. Tell them this is for me. Eh? Let me take the brain for it. Tell them you may not mean anything to me. To you, eh? Not me, to you. <laughs> You're on your own. Now, tell them, you may not mean anything to me, but you mean everything to God. Tell them, you may not mean anything to this nation, to this village, and where you work, and in your family, but before God, you are worth everything tell them he can give the universe for you in Jesus name amen 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 you know the, there, there is a song they, they, they sang and said God loves people more than anything he would rather die than let them go he would rather die Say, God loves people more than anything. God loves people more than anything. More than anything, He wants them to know. Don't let them go. God loves people more than anything. Now tell, tell your neighbor, God loves you. More than the cars, more than the houses, more than silver and gold, more than all the animals, more than the precious stones, more than the, the, the super highways and the airports and the aircrafts and ships and machines and everything that you think is of value. You know, some of us, even when we compare ourselves, especially for women, and I say this with respect, uh, sometimes it's not good to be attached to the value that people come and give. You know, they give some goats. Eh? Like uh, he came and gave some goats to your home and said, you are worth that. Eh? You, tell your neighbor, if she's a lady, you are not worth goats. <laughs> you know, they bring some goats there and they say, that you know, how, how can you buy someone with goats? <laughs> Charlie, are you worth some goats? What did he bring? <laughs> bulls. Are you worth bulls? <laughs> now look at your neighbor and tell them, you are not worth goats or cows or bulls. You are worth more than everything and anything on this earth. Is that true? Even this woman said, even the dogs eat crumbs. Even dogs eat crumbs. And she was told, great is thy faith. 
and may you receive that which you desire and let me tell you she attached that value until Jesus was moved to perform this miracle you must present your work before the Lord even when nobody does Amen. yes even when nobody this is the only place that you are allowed to tell your worth. Sometimes you go to tell people, I am this and this, I am this and this. I remember, I don't know which barrio I attended and uh, the man that was there was uh, speaking so highly about himself and speaking so highly about himself and saying, I even don't want your money here. If you have prepared anything for me, I don't need it. I'm this and that and that. And when we went to the parking lot, I saw him doing something, uh, you know, putting some clothes here into the uh, socks and took his bicycle <laughs> that, that was very old and I said Ooh, wee. okay <laughs> is this your old and I said he is worthy so much more than silver and gold tell your neighbor it doesn't matter what you came with tell them even if you came walking eh? tell them even if you came on a bicycle or and eh? tell them it doesn't matter <laughs> you are worth more than the duty or the bike or the car that you came with tell them you are worth more than the house that you live in tell them you are worth more than the budget of Kenya and the budget of the universe tell them you are worth more than the planes more than anything and therefore, when we meet tomorrow, walk like someone that is worth everything Amen. before the Lord. Amen. Not someone that is, you know, walking shoulders down and despising themselves and imagining that they are still, because they are still doing their, 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 their bicycle, and they imagine that now others are doing well. And, and, and they are doing big machines and others are flying every day and others are going here and there and others are buying properties every day let me tell you, you are worth more than any property so that today, do not think that uh, you are worth uh, because you have a something and a something or a nothing plus something no, no, whatever you are worth, whatever you have bought whatever you have acquired that is not your true worth because God gives you value because someone said that take everything away from me but leave me Jesus because Jesus gives me value amen amen, amen. you are worth more even than the money that you are going to give so prepare that money prepare that money prepare something in the presence of the Lord to give your tithe your offering and every kind of offering that you are about to give just prepare it before the Lord in the name of Jesus Glory be to Jesus. And when you prepare your tithe, just come, just come here as we sing that song. God loves people more than anything in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God loves people more than anything. God loves people more than anything. More than anything he wants them to know He would rather die than let them go God loves people more than anything Oh God, God loves people more than anything God loves people more than anything more than anything he wants them to know he rather die than let them go God loves people more than anything those that are giving their tithes you can come before the Lord even as we receive those tithes in the presence of the Lord Amen. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Send them value more than what they are giving today, more than what there is in their accounts, 
more than everything they have acquired, more than everything that they see, more than they, their jobs, their businesses, that they are more valuable to you and precious and honorable to you more than anything. I thank you and worship you for my Father and my God. You're going to bless them. You're going to reward. You're going to remember them. You're going, my Father and my God, to come through for them in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for an overflow over their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. May they see you coming through for them in every way. For you are a precious God and a wonderful God with you. And we worship you. For we know that, my Father, you have already blessed them and opened doors for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless, O oh Father, every other gift that your people are going to give before you this morning. For I know that my Father and my God, they are going to continue even earning more and making more. And my Father, finding breakthroughs after breakthroughs. And my God, doors being opened before them in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe that Heavenly Father, that the next time, oh dear Lord, they are going to give more because you shall have blessed them even more. In the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise and honor. For we know that my father. That you are going to bless us. And remember us. Even as we give. In Jesus mighty name. And everybody say amen. Amen. God bless you. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. In Jesus mighty name. Jesus name. Glory be to Jesus. We can give our offerings.